Okay, um, the topic today is uh, preventing scams for seniors. So will it be about an hour of presentation and then I'm certainly happy to stick around and answer any questions. So if we look at the, um, if we look at the median individual loss to fraud, uh, I'd like you to look at this chart and you'll see a couple of things. You'll see that uh, in the seniors group, the big one is the plus 80 and over. If you look at the amount of fraud that's lost uh, in, in, for, for the plus 80 group, it's staggering. It's, uh, it's more than double the, the average. So if you're between 70 and 79, uh, you know, this is the average, but if you are over 80, it, it, it more than doubles. So this is a huge, huge problem. Now, um, if you look at the, the, the cost of the, the, how much people are getting scammed for, uh, in 2017, it was $36.5 billion. That's not million, that's billion. So we're talking about a lot of money and a lot of problems. So that's why I decided to do this, um, do this presentation. Uh, and that was, so that's, and it was interesting. Um, last year, I was doing a presentation at Silveridge, uh, my home um, computer club, and I was coming out of the bathroom and one of the uh, custodians said, you know, he says, you should do a talk on scamming. He says, because I got scammed this week. And he said, I think that'd be a great idea. And I said, well, okay. And I went home and within uh, two weeks, I had over a hundred slides made. It was the information, there's just so much information on this. Now, why are seniors so vulnerable? That's, that's a very interesting question. And one that actually is being addressed. And we'll talk about that in a minute. One of the problems with seniors are, is they're very trusting. Now, why are seniors so trusting? Uh, a couple of large universities looked at the brains of seniors and they did lots of MRI scans and tried to figure that out and actually found that the part of the brain that makes you more trusting gets bigger as you get older and the part of the brain that makes you more inquisitive and more or less trusting is it gets smaller. And of course they theorize that this is an adaptive process for seniors as they get older because you need more help so you become more trusting. So that is one of the problems of seniors is they become more trusting as they get older. Also, of course, seniors have more accumulated wealth. Uh, Willie Sutton, the bank robber, once people asked him once, why do you rob banks? And he said, well, that's where the money is, right? So that's uh, the accumulated wealth is certainly uh, one, of the, uh, uh, one of the big uh, issues with seniors. That's where the money is. Now, if you look at seniors, uh, you'll see that the primary, a lot of problems seniors have are, is often the primary financial manager is a spouse that has passed away. Usually in relationships or couples, um, one person is more dominant or looks after the finances. And when that person dies, that really creates a huge problem. This leaves the remaining senior to look after financial planning, which they've never done before and often don't feel confident. We could be dealing with some mental illness. Uh, there could be confusion, largely possibly around medication. There could be some memory loss, uh, maybe some dementia, or even progressing on to Alzheimer's disease. Also, seniors have problems with um, communication, and often this is from poor vision. They, they, they have a hard time reading, or on the phone, they can't hear very well, so communication becomes difficult. The other problem seniors have is uh, a loss of existing support group. Uh, I know my support group that I have, if I want to make some sort of business investment, I have all my friends that I've had for many, many years, and I get together and ask them what they think. But when they're all gone, who do we, who do we trust? And so, and there are some major financial decisions that we have to make when we get older, like the sale of one of our biggest assets, which might be the sale of your home, <coughs> excuse me, and where are you going into, and will you be going into supportive care? So there's lots of challenges uh, as we uh, reach into our senior years. And so it is important uh, not to try and do this on your own and ask for help. So common scams that, that we're going to talk about today um, uh, involve these um, 
four, four areas. We're going to talk first of all about uh, telephone scams. And that is, uh, that's an interesting problem. Now, <clears throat> this is, uh, uh, telephone scams are common and they usually occur uh, often in the morning and the people on the other end of the phone are often domineering, dogmatic, very authoritarian, and they want you to do something. And oftentimes it's, um, it could be IRS, it could be your power company, it could, they want, they want an immediate response to some, some problem that they're creating. It could be, it could be a call maybe from your bank. Uh, it, it would be a trusted source that you would, you would normally trust and they want you to do something. Uh, and this can be complicated because it's for uh, the reasons I mentioned earlier, you may have um, memory problems that may, you may have just taken medication, you just got up in the morning and all of a sudden there's a phone call and it, it's your bank and they want you to do something. So these people are very, very good and they, uh, they will often get you to do something that you shouldn't be doing, either giving them information, uh, giving them credit card access or giving them something and they will pick your pocket. So phone scams are very common and you'll typically uh, typically get these people trying to pose uh, for IRS phoning you and, and wanting, and they all wanted immediate resolve to the issue. So, um, so you'll often give out information that you shouldn't. This was interesting. The, um, I, I put this in the, uh, the presentation because if you look at this couple, the couple on the right side here, um, he, I think, is a senior, just probably turns 65. His wife's younger. Um, and it was interesting because they look pretty normal people. And they got, this is an SRP problem. Uh, they got, uh, she got, he got a call. Uh, no, Annette, his wife got a call uh, from SRP saying that the, 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 uh, she hadn't paid the bill and that they were immediately going to cut off the power that day and that the bill had to be paid immediately with prepaid debit cards and that would all all as all as they were going to take so she actually went and uh, uh purchased a bunch of uh, it was several thousand dollars worth of prepaid debit cards came home phoned the number and gave the card numbers now at the end of the day she looked back on this and thought how dumb could i have been you know this is just ridiculous that srp would call me and demand this sort of thing but in the heat these people are very good in the heat of the moment uh, it's it's sometimes hard to to see really what's going to what really what's happening so one of the primary defenses uh for seniors uh in um in telephone scams is the answering machine um and, and I would, uh, if you look up here, I hope no one has ever seen the one on the left-hand side. Uh, this is certainly the, one of the first answering machines that, uh, that we had. Hopefully no one has, has one of these. Uh, when I go out to see people in their homes, they often have the one in the middle here. And this has the old micro cassette. Uh, I still see a lot of these around because they never break down and they always keep working. These should probably be taken out and thrown away. If you have one of these, get rid of it. Uh, most of the um, modern answering machines are around 20 bucks and it would be a digital one. And this is the, the one on the right hand side here. And my encouragement, if you are a senior, you're over 80 and you're thinking about, is get an answering machine and have your messages go right to, uh, to an answering machine. Now, if you have, uh, if you have, um, there are phones like this, this is about $30. You'll see it has great big, huge numbers and a, and a big screen so you can see it. This is a little more expensive, but this, uh, this has an answering machine in it. This is my answering machine. Um, I have a little more complicated one. This is from Costco, it's around $100. And this actually has Bluetooth capability, so my cell phones actually connect uh, to, to this answering machine and uh, it, it, it works in through my, so when I come in, whether my wife or I come in, it automatically connects uh, our cell phones to the portable system in our house. So that sort of works well. A little more complicated, but, but it, that is available as well. Because scammers don't leave messages. That's the big issue here. Uh, when my mother-in-law was in her probably mid 80s, we would always be calling her and all we'd get was an answering machine. 
And you know, she said, I just don't feel comfortable talking to people that phone me because I'm just don't think I could tell if someone was scamming me or not. So she, she very smart lady, uh, she purchased an answering machine. So scammers, scammers don't leave messages. So if you set that up and that's your primary way in which you answer the phone is on the machine, then that, that'll work out for you. Now I have, um, I'm, as you, most of you know, I'm a retired physician. I spent my whole life uh, phoning people back uh, at the end of the day. Usually it was about an hour of my time and I only ever got about 10% of people in my whole life uh, when I would call back in the evening. 90% went to answering machines. So I have a, uh, a bit of a bone to pick for people who use answering machines. So please set up the answering machine so that it rings after three or five rings. By default, most answering machines leave it to, um, it goes on for quite a long time before it gets picked up. But there's always an option on an answering machine to set it for either pick up after three rings or five rings. If you have uh, mobility issues, uh, give yourself maybe five rings. If you don't, give yourself three rings. But don't leave it on the default, which is forever, because someone someone coming in your doctor's office uh, trying to leave you a message, it will ring and ring and ring and ring before the answering machine picks up. And leave a message. Um, it, 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 we want to limit the personal information, but when we call a number, we really want to know that it's you. So you could say, um, this is uh, Diana. You just say, this is Diana, leave, leave, uh, leave a message after the tone or something like that but don't give a lot of personal information, but it, we just like to know that it is you. Check the uh, check call forwarding from uh, other numbers and always test the other number. Now voicemail, uh, if you are going to use your, um, your cell phone instead of, um, instead of an answering machine, maybe you don't even have a landline and you're going to use a voicemail, uh, good, this, this will work well, but I'm gonna tell you um, in all the people I'm I've seen that have voicemails and all the teaching I've done, uh, probably 5% of people actually know how to use voicemail. So if you're gonna use it, please know how it works. Uh, that's, the, that's one of the, the important things is, and we need you to check, check it daily to find out if there's important messages. Uh, again, uh, you can forward it to your home. Uh, and also with your, um, uh, with your cell phone and there's a really good spam identification and a lot of new features that are coming to, um, to cell phones in, in preventing spam calling. So there's a lot of features that, so this could actually work in your favor by using uh, your um, um, voicemail on your cell phone. Uh, those of you who have services like uh, Magic Jack, I, I use, my, this is my Magic Jack account. Um, I, there's an option in the Magic Jack account called Automated Call Screening. And when you click on this and turn this on, what happens is if you phone me on my Magic Jack phone number, it will say, please uh, press four to be connected to, the, to, connected to me and you, it will tell you, and those numbers rotate. So this, this prevents the uh, automated dialing system phoning because they won't know how to interpret that number. So if you phone me on my number, my Magic Jack number, um, it, it, you'll have to push four or two or one a number to get connected. And this really, uh, I just don't get any spam calls on my Magic Jack. Turn on call ID because your family and loved ones will wanna call you. And so if you uh, see that they are calling, you, you can see uh, their picture and it, and it identifies who they are, then you can pick up. So not all calls have to go to the answering machine. Certainly your loved ones can call you, but other calls can simply go to the machine. Um, in, in person scams, this isn't as common as it used to be. Um, this, was a, this was an Arizona couple that, um, uh, a fellow showed up from the Department of Treasury and won and scammed these people out of a lot of money. So you have to be very careful who shows up at your house uh, and make sure that there's profit, proper identification. And my advice would be is that they should come and make an appointment if they do indeed need to talk to you. And also you should probably have somebody there with you 
if, they, uh, if they're coming to do some sort of business with you. Uh, let's talk about post office, um, online gambling. Now, if you look at the fraud by, if you look at over 60 fraud by category, you'll find indeed that the most fraud that's done to seniors is in tech support. And we all, you know, you've all had the Microsoft scams and all that sort of stuff. And clearly tech support scams are the ones that are the most frequent and get the most money. But I wanted to come down and look at something that's often overlooked. Uh, and these are the prizes, sweepstakes, and lotteries. And I wanted to tell you a sad story about a good friend of mine. Uh, his first name was Sam, and he was a surgeon. He came to our community uh, when he was about 50 years old, and we became good friends. He was a pilot, he was a very successful surgeon, and he became um, a good friend of mine. In fact, bought a house two doors down from where I live. Um, he, uh, unfortunately, his, unfortunately, after retirement, his wife died and, and Sam um, became sort of an introvert. And I was his patient, or I was his physician, but he didn't often show up very often. And his family got concerned about finances uh, after a while, but he had lots of money. We couldn't, they couldn't figure out where it was going. And he was, in, he was subscribing to over a hundred sweepstakes a day. In fact, one of the things when, this, when, we, when we sort of figured this all out, they had his mail diverted to my house and I would check it before sending it over to his house. And he had so much mail that, 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 it, that the mail truck had to deliver it. It wasn't, we still have home delivery here and he uh, and the mail truck actually had to deliver it and it was a huge sack of mail. And he was filling these in by the hundreds each day. And this is a sort of dementia, one of the things we see in dementia and he, um, which, and so it was a really big problem. So it, and it wasn't obvious and he had never gambled or had any gambling problems in his whole life. So this is obviously a form of, um, of, of, of mental illness and, and I just, if you are looking after people, uh, it is important that if you think there's some, some history of, of, of financial problems, then, then always remember about lotteries and, and scams. Now, this is an interesting one. Um, this is romance scams. Now you may laugh at this. Uh, I, um, romance scams are, are elaborate, but have been, but many have been deceived. Now. I've been married for what, 45 years. Um, there were, wasn't even internet or computers when we first started dating my wife. Now, fast forward to where we are in 2020, uh, probably over 50 or 60% of relationships now are started on online, um, online dating. And this is particularly common with seniors because this is, uh, uh, seniors often have lost one of their uh, partners and are lonely. Now, there's nothing wrong with this as long as you choose the proper uh, proper format to do this. Uh, this is a lady, however, who had some big problems. She uh, she met a fellow online. The um, it was a successful relationship. She went down to see him. He lived. He was Mexican, and he lived in Mexico. She went down to see him, and to make a long story short, the relationship was great, um, and they decided to get married. Uh, he was going to come back to see her, um, see her family. On the way back uh, to the airport in Mexico, uh, he got a call and said to her, gee whiz, um, one of my businesses is having problems. I'll meet you in uh, San Diego tomorrow. And she said, okay. And so he said, I'll, you can continue on with your flight today. And she said, fine. He said, oh, by the way, would you mind uh, taking my suitcase so I don't have to carry it the next day? And she said, not a problem. So she got on the plane and as she uh, arrived at uh, San Diego, she was, uh, her bags were searched. And of course the bag she had, which was his bag, was full of cocaine or heroin, actually it was heroin. So she spent the next six years of her life trying to get, um, trying to get uh, her name cleared. This was an Arizona man who um, uh, got, um, um, got uh, scammed for seven thousand dollars. 
again, um, developed a relationship uh, online and when um, he, he, um, they were gonna get together in, in Europe someplace and he sent her the money for the ticket and of course she never showed up. This was an interesting one. This again was an Oregon person, an 80 year old widower lost his life savings to a swindler who posed as a woman in love with him and convinced him to spend a whopping $200,000 to ship a massive lion sculpture from China. She said this would be, um, uh, anyway, so <laughs> he lost a lot of money on that one. So we have to really be careful. This is um, what uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, well, just listen to this. Morning, an alert coming from the Arizona Attorney General's office saying that scammers are using Valentine's Day to cash in on unsuspecting people who are looking for love. And as three on your side, Susan Campbell found out there's a new twist on the old romance scam that we've all been warned about. Good morning. Good morning, guys. People lose more money to romance scams than any other type of scam. The Federal Trade Commission says the median loss is $2,600. And now scammers are scouring new sites for their victims. The flowers, the chocolate, the bad guys. Crooks will use every opportunity they can, every holiday they can, and this is the time of year, it's Valentine's Day. How common are romance scams? You know, we see them, and we've seen an uptick in that. Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich says romance scams often start on social media or dating websites. Some common cons, your new love interest needs money for a flight to meet you, for an expensive surgery, or even to pay off gambling debts. You gotta be weary of anyone you meet online. You know, there's, make sure if uh, anyone is trying to like move you to like a, a separate chat or try to isolate you from your friends or family or says, hey, don't talk to anyone about our relationship. Those are huge red flags. And now there's a new twist to the old romance scam. According to fraud.org, scammers are scouring sugar daddy websites to find their victims. These sites often promise users companionship in exchange for financial support. They will pretend to be a sugar daddy or a sugar mama, and they'll promise like to pay someone's tuition or credit card bills. That person, that college student, then will provide them all this information, and then um, basically they get ripped off. These scammers that are targeting Arizonans, are they in Arizona or are they somewhere else? We do see a lot of these transactions where someone's asking you to send money, um, that they are overseas, um, and so that makes it more difficult. But there are instances where they're, you know, right here in our backyard, and, you know, we're going to go after them. Broad.org says the number of complaints related to sugar daddy scam soared 250% last year. So we talk about it all the time. People are falling for these because these scammers are convincing. Mm -hmm. they They're make good at what you, they do. They make you believe you yeah. are in love with this person that you've never met. It's so cruel to take advantage of somebody who's emotionally vulnerable. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So Americans lost two, 201 million in online romance scams last year. So again, and it's going up substantially each year. Again, just be wary. They often, uh, these relationships, they often claim to be uh, professionals. They're often deployed in the military. They're working on an oil rig or they're a doctor embedded with international groups. They insist on anonymous money transfers and they, want a, they have a fast moving relationship. They want, they want things to move ahead a lot faster than you're usually comfortable with. All right, let's talk about uh, computer scams. Uh, this is a big topic and we could spend a lot of time on this, but really what most of these people want is personal data. And we've talked and I, I have a whole program on identity theft, but what they really want is your personal data to complete the identity theft. Be very wary of emails that you have like this that uh, come from something called a reward program or something where you're going to get something for free. And once you click on the claim reward, uh, you'll be asked for some personal information to claim your reward, but you've never really um, submitted anything. You have no idea why you're getting this, but you think you might get something for free. Well, there is nothing in the world for free. 
So uh, stay away from uh, that sort of thing. Uh, also, uh, your social insurance number is really the thing that people want. You should never, ever, ever give that out on internet. Again, be wary of, um, of companies like Microsoft or Apple calling you and telling you there's something wrong with your computer. Your computer is not monitored by anybody. Uh, none of these services uh, continually monitor your computer. So if you get a call saying we've identified a virus on your system, hang up. Be careful of um, if you're in, um, if you're looking for apartment rentals and you drive by and you see a sign like this, uh, this is a frequent scam where you phone up, it's a hot market and you uh, put your money down for the rental and find out that there is indeed no rental there. And again, be aware of online shopping. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, this is really interesting. Um, this is available, and I'll, I'll show you the website in a minute. This is through the Better Business Bureau. And what you're looking at here, you'll see Chandler, and all the yellow dots are where the scams occurred and how many people got scammed. So you can actually, I'll give you the, the link in a minute, and, and you can actually bring this up. This is, this is about six months old now, so it's probably changed. But you can actually see in your area where the scams have occurred. Uh, and this is uh, the site, it's bbb.org forward slash scam tracker forward slash US. Uh, and I'll show you that a little bit later. But this is, uh, and you can see where all the scams have occurred. Now, one of the interesting things was this was a scam that occurred uh, about six months ago. This was a lady who um, was looking to renew her driving license. And she was new to the town, to Mesa, and didn't know where to go. So she, she did a Google search and she came up with this website called serviceareacom Now, this looks pretty innocuous, in other words, and it's got actually on the site here, it's got um, descriptions of where you can go to find the services that you need. And there's nothing wrong with that, except when you click on any of these links, um, it wants, it, it, it's a service, so they want you to pay. And it's, uh, the service is uh, $9.95 um, a month. So she was in a hurry and thought, well, for $9.95, I'll just pay it. Put, she put her credit card in, and, um, and of course, it took her to the driver renewal site where she could get her driver's license renewed, which of course was free. She could have got that anyway, uh, and, but she did go and she got her driver's license renewed. The problem was is that she never checked her credit card statements and each month for the next year she got charged nine dollars and 95 cents for that service so again be very weary of, of things um, particularly when you're putting your credit card out there again if the other thing we like to tell everyone if you get scammed please uh, this is the um, federal FBI complaint you can lodge file a complaint if you if you have the impression that gee whiz I was dumb, I, I shouldn't have done that, um, and you never, you never file a complaint, then, then the problem keeps, keeps resurfacing. So if you do get scammed, be sure and file a complaint. Now, um, we're going to talk a little bit about shopping scams, and there are a number of things that you have to think about here. Um, look for dot .club or dot .top instead of dot .com. Um, there are, uh, we'll show you in a minute how to look at um, the URL on a website. Oftentimes these are, you, that's a clue to uh, fraud. If you have to pay by bank transfer or money order, they don't take recognized uh, credit cards, then be very weary. If the prices are too far too low, if this is a smoking hot deal, you're getting a a thousand dollar camera for $150, be really leery. If it's too good, it's probably a scam. And if they don't accept credit cards or PayPal, then um, pass on the deal. I wanna talk a little bit about PayPal, uh, and I'm just gonna play a video for you now uh, on this. This is, everybody should have a PayPal, and this is a big protection against uh, against online <laughs> Hi, 
Drew Angel here with an introduction to PayPal. Today we're just going to take a quick look at a simple question. What exactly is PayPal and how does it work? And the easy answer is it's a way to send and receive payments. There's a little bit more than that going on. you got your buyers and your sellers involved or senders and receivers. Let's take a closer look, give you a little bit better knowledge on what exactly there is happening here and see how it might help you out. So first you have the buyer side. When you want to make payments with PayPal, of course the first thing you'll do is create your PayPal account and you'll treat it like a wallet. This is your, your digital wallet or your PayPal wallet. Just like a regular wallet, you can hold cash in there in the form of a PayPal balance. You can have your debit card and credit cards in there from various banks or credit card providers. You can have multiple bank accounts, so checking accounts or savings accounts from a local branch or from online banks. You can add all of these into that PayPal wallet and when you make payments, you can choose whichever funding source you'd like to use. So again, your PayPal balance would be your cash, or bank accounts could also be kind of considered cash, and then you've got your credit and debit cards. The cool thing is, when you make payments with PayPal, all those funding sources are protected inside that PayPal wallet. So the seller, all they're gonna get is your name, your email address, and a shipping address if it's required, if they need to send you something. So that sensitive information like the bank account numbers, credit card numbers, and expiration dates, and security codes, the actual billing address associated with these, with these funding sources, that's all protected behind the PayPal barrier or inside your PayPal wallet. So consider if you go shopping on 20 different websites and you put in a credit card number on all, all, each of these 20 sites, well that's 20 different chances that they could be saving your card number in their database. They're not supposed to be doing that, but a lot of them do. And you know, if they get hacked and that data gets stolen, now your credit card numbers or bank account information is included in that hacked data. Obviously, this isn't a good thing. And again, when you pay with PayPal, none of that information is provided to the seller. All they're gonna get is your name, email, and shipping address. So it protects you. You have this buyer protection behind that PayPal barrier. This is one of the biggest advantages of using PayPal. <clears throat> now, uh, we'll talk about that uh, in a minute. Uh, the other thing I want to talk a little bit about is uh, staying protected while you're, uh, while you're traveling. Uh, if you're traveling, beware of public Wi-Fi. Uh, I think you're all, um, we've talked about this before, but you, uh, if you're traveling and you're going to use public Wi-Fi, then you should use what we call a VPN. A VPN is software that you can put on your, uh, on your uh, mobile device, and when you are in a different country or you're traveling, it will protect you. VPNs hide uh, your IP address, they hide your social media identity, they keep your location hidden, they don't give away your shopping habits, and they protect your personal data. So if you are going to use public Wi-Fi in your travels, please use a VPN. The other thing that you need to know, and a lot of seniors don't know this, how to switch between cellular data and Wi-Fi data. Wi-Fi data, as we mentioned earlier, is not secure, but your cellular data is. So if you are going to do banking, you need to turn off Wi-Fi and make sure your uh, phone is connected uh, to the cellular data. If it's connected to cellular data, it's encrypted. It's an encrypted private network and it is as safe as you can get. So if you want to do your personal banking, use the cellular data part of your plan, not, not Wi-Fi, and you'll be fine. Now, many of you, when you uh, travel, uh, you you need to charge your device in airports. And what you're going to be seeing, uh, and you see this more and more, in fact, they just installed in our airport, a public charging port. Uh, and you'll often see uh, stands like this where everybody's plugging all their devices into these uh, charging ports. And this is really bad news. In fact, when I was in New Zealand and Auckland, they had one of these, and there must have been four or 500 people that had plugged their their, their phones into this massive charging port. The problem is uh, these charging ports are bi-directional and, and what 
and it, and it basically you're connecting onto a network without any security so that uh, so that uh, anyone that's plugged in here sh will be able to see your hard drive and download any malware onto your device so this is this is a very dangerous situation and of course i always like to say when you travel make sure you take your condoms and on the right hand side here this is what we call a usb condom and this is um this is made by a company called PortaPal. Uh, you can buy a pack of two of these for $10 on Amazon. And what these are is the URLs, these are, are a data blocker. So this allows only the passage of inf only the passage of power into your machine. It doesn't allow any uh, data to be transferred uh, into your machine. So if you really wanted to use a public charging station, uh, you would plug this into the charging station and then plug your device into the USB here. And this only allows for energy to come into your computer. It doesn't allow for any data to be used to, it's a data blocker. And this is, uh, these work very well, but you know, most people carry extra batteries uh, with them when they travel. So, but stay away please from public charging uh, systems. The other thing that you have to be careful of is when you rent a car. Uh, all the new cars now have uh, Android Auto. They are uh, common now. And when you get into the car, your phone automatically connects to the car through Bluetooth. Uh, this creates a problem because of course it uploads all the data off your phone, particularly all your contacts into the car system. Now, after you finish with your car rental and you're taking it back, uh, what happens, of course, is all your information is stored in the car's memory. So you need to make sure that there's usually a software option in the car to delete all the data. And you want to make sure that is deleted before you take the car back. <clears throat> now, it's uh, also important to know the difference between a debit card and a credit card. A debit card is uh, issued usually by your bank. Uh, it, it is a, it, it is, there's no contract, a contractual obligation with you. It's simply a way in which you can get your money out of the bank electronically. So if you have a hundred dollars in your bank, you would be able to use a debit card to get a hundred dollars out. There's no credit checks. It has nothing to do with a credit card. The problem is, is if you use that card and it gets compromised, it's uh, the banks will not give you your money back. There's no, there's no security associated with a debit card. So if you get scammed, the money's gone. Whereas a credit card is different. A credit card is, uh, is a contractual obligation with the company. You sign the form, you get a credit check and there's a contract. Now in the contract, everything goes towards the uh, it, of course, the credit card company, except for one thing, and that is fraud protection. And so that's the thing that you will, of course, uh, be, be so, so fraud protection in credit cards is, is uh, very important. So some of the things that we don't want you to use your debit card for, please do not use debit cards for filling up your gas at a gas station. Uh, credit card skimmers uh, are common, really common. And when you put your debit card into a gas station, if it's uh, the, if the, there's a skimmer that's being added to that, uh, they'll get your PIN number and your and your debit card number, and boom, the money will get sucked out of your 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 uh, your bank account very quickly. Um, again, uh, be very careful with online purchases. Uh, there is, uh, do not use it on, on any internet purchases. And for sure, when you um, are purchasing things um, at a store or also travel, travel to different parts of the world, whether it's airline tickets, cruise tickets, all these sort of things, you should not use a debit card. You should use a credit card because the fraud protection is there and uh, you won't lose your money. If you go and you look um, down at Fry's, Fry's, of course, you know I live in Mesa and my favorite Fry's store is just uh, a couple of blocks from where, where you hold your um, computer meetings. When you go in, you'll see that um, 
you'll find big, uh, this was taken in for eyes, you'll see these are prepaid uh, debit uh, visa cards. Uh, these actually work quite well. They're, uh, for those of you who don't have credit cards, you wanna do some online purchasing around Christmas, uh, you're worried, you might be quite worried about using um, any sort of device uh, for online purchases, these work very well. Uh, there is a cost, the cost isn't that much. They're usually about $1.95 to purchase. When you go through the checkout, the, uh, uh, the checkout teller will just ask how much you wanna put on these cards. They're completely anonymous. There's no personal information on there. You put the information on the card and you can use it just like a credit card. The only issue is, is that they take a, a percentage, usually one or 2% per month. So if you're gonna use these, it's best if you load them up, use them for three or four months, and then, and then make sure you, you don't carry a balance. You wouldn't wanna leave your money on these cards for two or three years, because you'll find that, that uh, the amount would go down quite substantially. But these actually work very well for people on a short-term basis. All right, um, that's it. I think we've, what are we here? We're just, uh, 54, we've got time for questions. I'm gonna stop sharing my, my screen and I will open it up for any questions. You'll have to unmute yourself. Uh, uh, I, have a, I have a comment, Ron. Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of implied that if you get into a rental car with your phone, it will connect to the car and that's not quite true you actually actually have to go through the process to pair your phone to the car before right. you become that's, unsafe as you said right that's true yes you have to you have to pair with it although it's easier and easier and easier now with these cars is you know it's it's very easy to pair with your car so once you pair it you have to you have to make sure that you delete your the data off the car when you take it back because it, it uploads your contacts into the actual car. Absolutely. So uh, that's that's a big danger. And you really need to figure out how to get rid of that. It is. And the problem is, you know, you're often you're back at the airport, you're in a hurry, you got to catch your flight. You know, it's the last thing that you think about is you you forget, right? And you um it, and you don't hit that delete button on the car. And plus they're all different and you gotta find the button and how do you do it? It's, it, I've rented lots of cars and all the information from the last person's all there. I mean, that's, it's really pretty scary. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use Bluetooth because I never got into understanding Understanding it and there was so many different avenues I was taking so consequently I never used it but that being said um, I ran across there's an option on your phone and there's an option on my computer too I believe where you can turn Bluetooth off just by clicking it so if you rent a car and you turn the Bluetooth option off on your phone problem solved problem solved Although, as uh, Earl said, uh, in, when you're pairing with the phone, it'll usually, your phone will usually ask if you want it to be paired. Um, so, I mean, it, is, it isn't it is just going to automate. Um, I'm not sure, though. Like, I would, you know, this is all changing, particularly Android Auto, uh, because you got to remember, a lot of people do this automatically. Every time they get in their car, it automatically switches over and, and, uh, and, and Bluetooth pairs to the car. Like if, if you owned a car that you had Android Auto in it, every time you got in that car, you wouldn't have to pair it. It would automatically just connect, right? So, well, uh, so it, it remembers the pairing. That's right. What happens. That's right. So if you never give it, if you never pair the phone. That's true, yes. To the car, it, it will never connect. That's right. But, now, but I've, never seen a, I've never okay. seen a Bluetooth device that I, that automatically connects without prior pairing. That's right. And Diana, you're right, but it, but you're also right. Is it, Diana? Is if you turn off the Bluetooth, then it, it's not going to pair. Okay. So my ignorance paid off. I never used it, and I don't yeah, have to worry you know. about anything being stolen. 
Well, the other okay. thing too, the other thing too, you should remember is if you're not going to use Bluetooth on your phone, uh, turn it off because it uses battery power and it, you know, it, it affects the battery on your phone. So if you're not going to use it, turn the Bluetooth off for sure. Okay. Thank you. The danger of turning off the Bluetooth is that if you use it for something, like Ron was saying, if you use it to pair with your answering machine in your home, then you turn it off when you get in a rental car or something, you'll forget to turn it back on. True story. Okay. I, um, I, I was going to talk a little more about PayPal. I, I think that um, I think it's really important that you um, that I don't know if everybody here has a PayPal account. I think it's uh, uh, it's free. There is no cost. Uh, I think that if you're going to do any online transaction, which of course we are using more and more now, uh, it's really important that you protect yourself uh, through through PayPal. Uh, there's no cost to you. And certainly, it, um, it it'll offer uh, the 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 receiving people. The other the, the seller doesn't get any of your personal information, so you don't have to give any personal information out at all. Now, Amazon does not use PayPal, so um, it's a different service. But but aside from Amazon, uh, I use PayPal for everything now. You know, I had a PayPal account a long time ago didn't quite understand it. So it just kind of got pushed in the back and I never used it again. Um, listening to the presentations and you specifically, I think you touched on PayPal once before, I decided, okay, uh, let's see if it'll work and all that sort of stuff. And I am, in fact, I'm waiting for something tomorrow uh, from Amazon. And for the last two or three purchases I made through Amazon, I am using the PayPal account. Uh, Amazon doesn't take, I don't think, Amazon doesn't take PayPal. There's no way you can use PayPal for Amazon. It, I don't know, unless it's a third party seller, but that would still go through Amazon. But there's no, there's no way in which um, you can use PayPal for an Amazon purchase. It's not possible. I'm not sure how that would, but it's not, it, it, Amazon does not take PayPal. So, but PayPal works on all other situations where you can use it and it will work on any um, any other, but the, the logo has to be on there. The, the seller has to agree to use, of course, has to use PayPal. So it's uh, that's that that's important. I'll have to look at it more closely, but I do know that I've been ordering off of Amazon, whether it's a third party, um, you know, that's another thing I'd have to look into, but a direct sale from Amazon, you're saying that they will not accept PayPal. No, there's no PayPal option on there for you. Um, Only with a third party. No, I don't even think of the third party because you're still going through Amazon. So yeah, yeah you're still you're still going through the Amazon uh, service. So uh, Amazon does not use um, does not use PayPal. Now, I think it's perfectly fine. I'm okay with that. I mean, I order at you know me. I, I think I did my Let's Go shopping. You know, I'm Mr. Amazon, right? Um, I, I order a lot of stuff on Amazon. I've never had any problems. Uh, Amazon is, is, in my opinion, rock solid. Where the problem is, is when you're ordering stuff from smaller companies and you go to websites and you just, you know, you just don't know what's happening. Uh, and as they, they said in the, the video that you saw, if you go to 20 websites and you give your credit card out 20 times, then there's a very good chance that there's, you know, these, these, these companies get hacked all the time. So I think it's important that, um, so the PayPal account is really, really great. You know, I use it, uh, I buy stuff online from Lowe's and I use PayPal and uh, grocery shopping, I use PayPal. I use PayPal for, for lots of, and again, it doesn't matter because you could still pay it out of your bank, you could still pay it from credit cards because PayPal is just a wallet and it has all those, all your services in there that you can use. So it's not like you're, creating a new whatever. It's, it's just, it's just, they can't see the information. Ron, I'll have to look into it. Ron, it sounds like that PayPal would be a danger also, because if you're putting all your stuff in a PayPal wallet, what's to keep PayPal from being hacked? 
Uh, well, if they hacked it, they probably wouldn't get, it's all encrypted, they wouldn't get anything. So it's because they don't, it's, it's all an encrypted service. So it, it, it would be impossible, even if they hacked it, they're not, they can't, they can't see it. So uh, it's, it's, I don't, it's not, the way it's set up, it's not possible. So uh, well, and, uh, anything's possible with digital. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose, but I it's, mean, I mean, one of the, uh, what was it, Experian was hacked and, and lost a hundred million pieces of very, very critical data. Yeah, but, uh, but it's, anyway, so there's, I think there's 230 million people now using PayPal. Um, and so it's, uh, it, I mean, the other option is not to, and just put the credit card number in, and, and I just don't want to do that, so. I think it's I think it's a it's a great service and it's free to you. I mean, one I could see maybe putting one credit card in there, but to put multiple things in in the wallet that that really increases the danger of losing, you know, with all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, except it's all. I mean, I have all my credit cards in my bank account. Everything is all in PayPal, and it's all it's all there and it's encrypted. It's in, it's the same as LastPass. It's encrypted. So that so they uh, it's 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 I think it's real secure. I don't have any problems with it at all. One comment about Amazon. <clears throat> Last I made a couple of purchases re recently, where an option was to use Amazon Pay. That was new to me. I didn't realize that they had that service, and it worked quite well. Just similar to PayPal. It's doing the same thing, and also uh, you'll find Facebook is bringing out theirs. Uh, Amazon has theirs. Uh, Apple has Apple Pay as well. So you're, you're going to be seeing, because we're moving really to uh, an online digital shopping experience in the future, right? I mean, the brick and mortar stores are probably mostly going to go away and this is all going to be online. So whether you like it or not, we got to get used to this. And the important thing is to be safe, right? It's, it's important to, so that you feel safe and, and, and we protect your, your, your data. Ron, where does PayPal get their money? You say there's nothing free. Do they get it from the merchant? Absolutely, the credit card absolutely, company? absolutely. It's just like a credit card service. Uh, the merchant has to pay for the uh, for the service. Same as a credit card. The credit card uh, when you the seller has to has to pay for the credit card service. You mentioned using a VPN and a public Wi-Fi. Uh, if I ask what is VPN and how do you use it, is that another our subject or can, no, it, can you no, answer? No, it's, 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 it's not. And um, thanks for asking that question. It's a great question. The, the long and the short of it is this. Um, to, to boil it down into a very short answer to that is, if you are traveling and, you're, and you want to do banking, use your cellular connection. Don't use public Wi-Fi then you don't have to worry about a VPN. You, you need on your phone, you need to know how to turn off Wi-Fi and make sure that you're using your cellular service. Your cellular service, no matter what country you are in the world, is all encrypted. It's like using a VPN itself. So, so all you need to do is make sure you're on a cellular link and you can log into your bank and do all the banking you want. Doesn't matter what country you're in, no one can see anything, it's all encrypted, okay? And I think, I think that's the simple answer to the question, right? Um, yes, if you, if you don't have cellular data plan in a foreign country or when you're traveling and you do want to use public Wi-Fi, then yes, you have to use a VPN. Now, a VPN is a piece of software that you would download. There are many different companies that offer the service and it's, it's really a simple thing to do. Uh, you would uh, sign up and, and just download a little app onto your phone and it would provide the service for you. It's not very difficult to do. But in, in the grand scheme of things, um, uh, most people now when they travel will have cellular data. I would think that you would always travel with a cellular data plan of something and that would just solve that problem. Okay, thank you. It's, it's also very simple just to turn off the Wi-Fi on your phone temporarily. It is very, it and, is the phone will, and the phone will automatically default to the, That's to right. the data plan on your phone. That's right. But, you know, Earl, it's amazing how many seniors don't know how to do that. 
And so um, that's a might be a topic that the, your club can look at just to make sure every everybody does know how to do that. So I had a, a support for PayPal that I wanted to share with you. Um, the other thing that's good about PayPal is that if you end up with a with a vendor that is scamming you or ripping you off of some sort, they also have your back on that. I made a purchase of an item that was about $95 and uh, the item they sent me was valued probably at more $5. It was not at all what was advertised. Um, and I made a claim against the company with PayPal and they did in fact support that claim. When the vendor came back and offered me a $20 refund and I said no, and then they came back and offered a $30 refund. I said, no, this was fraudulently represented. No, I want my full refund back. And uh, PayPal did support me on that, and they did, in fact, refund my money. And the, uh, you know, the vendor was, in fact, you know, out that money at this point. So I was very pleased. That was just a recent, like about a month ago, that that happened. So I, I have used PayPal for a long time. I very much think that's a good idea. It also is really important that a lot of um, be very wary of buying something on Facebook. Um, you will find more and more ads now on Facebook. And the problem with these ads are, is when you click the link to buy it, um, and you, you, you go and you actually put your, that's why you want to use PayPal for sure. But if you didn't, and you click the link to buy something, what tradition, what will often happen, you don't know this when you're buying it, but it's coming from China. And once you get your receipt, once they email you your receipt, you see, oh, rats, this thing is in China, coming from China. It's from some rinky-dink company, and you, the delivery date's three months from now, right? And you didn't know that when you signed up to buy it, and all of a sudden now you've got this huge problem. You've ordered this thing. It's not going to be delivered, maybe never, and, and, it's, it's, and it's a real big problem. I don't know, Diana, was, was the one you ordered, was it a Facebook app? I believe it might have been. Again, it was so long from the time that I ordered yeah. to I received it. It's not it really clear. I was able to document what the advertisement was that I that I ordered and and uh, yeah. in fact received and send all of that through. But I I think it was a possibility. Yeah. Yeah, it's these ads on Facebook. You know, they look they're slick ads and they're they're really cool. And you think that's a really great idea, uh, but it um, it never comes or or it's it's just so long, you know, like who wants to wait three months to get something, right? So, and you don't know that when you, the way these ads are designed, when you put your personal information in and buy it, you're not aware of what's actually happening till the receipt comes. So it's, uh, be very weary about, the, ah, I'm, I'm not big on Facebook ads. The other thing that I found is that sometimes you wait long enough, you kind of forget. It's been so long, you forget what you've ordered. And yeah. the other good thing with PayPal is you can go back and review your PayPal account and see what things you've ordered and, and you can then capture the ones that you in fact haven't received, which is a, another helpful thing. And please don't use debit cards for gas purchases. That is really, really a bad thing to do. Um, and be, you should be limiting your use of debit cards for, for a lot of, and particularly for, um, um, uh, airplane reservations, hotel reservations, any sort of travel, you know, anything you're doing with travel now, make sure you use a credit card, not a debit card. That's so important. Uh, and really limit your, your use of your debit cards. That's the one good thing about Amazon is you can see how long it's going to take and exactly. you have ways of looking at that before you actually make the purchase. Yep. And most things that are from China or Hong Kong you're right. It it when I see something that's going to be three weeks or six weeks off, I don't want it. I don't want to deal with them. Yep, absolutely, Dick. You're right. And the other thing, you know, and you did mention it. Apple has the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 titanium card also, and you have Apple Pay, but you also have the wallet, which is a titanium card, and you can make purchases through that and you can transfer money and there's no, they don't know where that is coming from. 
yep, yep, it works. I, I've never used it, but but uh, have you used it, Dick? I haven't used it. I did get the card, uh, but uh, I haven't done it. Uh, some of the things you can do, you can put some cash into it. And like, if I wanted to send you some money, all I got to do is use a card and it'd go right to you. Uh, Ron, I use Apple Pay consistently. When I first started out, it was hard to find in different merchants. Now almost everybody has it and I have it on my, my watch. Oops, don't have my watch on, but it's also on my watch. Oh, really? Yeah. So you use your watch to pay? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah oh, it's like, oh, yeah, I just go up and you know, there's a little side button, clever, clever name, side button, and you just double click it and you just hold it down next to the point of sale terminal and there it is. The other thing you guys like, the other thing I do is that I, I didn't mention it in, I do it in the shopping presentation, but um, if you know, the Amazon gift cards, I mean, are, it is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I mean, go over to Fry's, wait twice a month, they've got four times fuel points on, right? Four times. So you buy $250 worth of Amazon gift cards you get a thousand dollars, a thousand points, fuel points, because it's got four times the value. That's a dollar off on your gas. Right. So you know, like in my in my resort, people come by because I have Amazon Prime, and they say, "Would you order something for me?" And I and they they don't think I'm a nice guy, right? They all think I'm a great guy because I love to order stuff for people. Well, I'm not a nice guy. I go down and I buy the gift cards, and I and you know I buy those. I don't pay by you know, I don't put my credit card on there. I buy the gift cards and put it on my account and use the account money to do it because I, I hardly pay anything for gas when I'm down in Mesa because I use the, the four times fuel points at Fry's there. That's the greatest yeah. thing. You know, uh, don't, that's a, a dollar off per gallon. You get a thousand points, that's a dollar off per gallon. So on a 30 gallon fill up, you know, that's a sizable amount of money. So Ron, do the Amazon gift cards have, do they, do they charge a fee, a monthly fee? Zip, nothing. No. nothing. All right. No fee, no nothing. And, uh, and I just, I just, I just bring them home. And when you open them up, I just, I just add them on my account. So I don't keep the, I don't actually keep the gift cards. I do, you just, you just, you just put the, put it on your Amazon account and you redeem the card right away. And, you know, I've got, a, I usually carry a, a balance on my Amazon account of two or 300 bucks. And, you know, we go through, you know, normally, because otherwise, when you're, when you're buying something on Amazon, you're putting your credit card in. Well, that's fine, but you're not getting the fuel points. So that's why I love down at Fry's there. And wait, you wait, usually twice a month, they have the four times, the four times points on. And, and, and that gives you, um, I mean, that gives you, because, 250 bucks times four, that's a thousand, that's a dollar, dollar off per gallon. So on a 30, you know, that'd be uh, $30 on it. You're going to save on, on, on gas purchase. Well, there was, they sometimes offer a certain time where uh, one of your bank cards um, will uh, have increased 5% uh, rewards back on it instead of the usual two or 3%. And I know that um, I ended up using that on my Amazon account for a while because it was, very nice. It was a nice kickback that way too. Mm -hmm. the ways you get those kickbacks. Uh, Darla, go ahead. Um, mm, oh, do you have to be an Amazon member to use these Amazon gift no. cards? No. No. No, but it's great. It's it's a it's a good service. But don't tell everyone because everyone thinks I'm a nice guy. But I'm really just doing it for the points. You know, they all think I'm a I'm a nice guy, but I just do it for the points. So uh, I'll keep your secret. Yeah, keep. My Everybody secret. knows now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's great. You know, I I really you know that's the I really miss Arizona, but I really miss that fry store. You guys are so lucky that that is such a nice store. Um, now I can't remember. Was someone in your club, or maybe it was somebody I met at your, at your uh, in your um, resort? But they lived next to the manager of fries. That 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 is the manager of that particular fries, and they said um, he said that normally when they build a big store like that, it takes twenty years to pay off the the mortgage on it. It's a big store, expensive. He said they paid that off at that fries store in three months, three years. 
in three years. So uh, it's, it's enormous, a big, very popular store. We were very much in need of a, a grocery store that was close to home. Walmart yeah. was our closest, and it was not, um, doesn't hold a candle to fries. So right. I think we were ready to support it. Yeah, it's good. It's my favorite yeah. store. When my wife decides she wants to spend all day in the grocery store, I can just go to the bar, you know, have a beer, a glass of wine, whatever. Or you can even Talk go to about over what to, a nice guy you are. <laughs> I know. And you, well, you can even take it, you know, you can even go to the counter, the meat counter, and grab a steak. Then you take it over to the, um, they'll cook it for you and then bring it down to the bar and you can have a glass of wine with your steak. <laughs> my, my daughter is, uh, is a district manager for Kroger's and, and she's in California, so that's Ralph's. And when she comes over here, she goes into the store and, and they're starting to build some of those kind of stores over there. But, uh, and, and my wife does get the, uh, the fuel points and everything and on the cards, and especially at Christmas, when she's uh, giving stuff out to the kids, she'll get the gift cards. And you're right, Ron, you know, sometimes I've gotten over a dollar off a, on a gallon of gas. So it, it's a pretty good deal. And all I can say is you folks just, just keep shopping at Fry's because that helps my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> one one com one complaint I've had against fries is you have your fries card. You can't use it at the scanner. So if you want to do your own self checkout at the scanner, it doesn't, won't take your uh, fries card for your discounts on some of the uh, merchandise. You have to go it's, through the checkout. Yes, it line. does. Yeah. Yes, it does. Do it all the time. Not mine. It never has worked. You need a new card. Maybe that's it. No, I've actually got it on my key ring. And, and I do too. I do too. And I mean on my key ring on my phone. <clears throat> right. And I just download their app on my phone. So whenever I check out, I pull up the app and it's the barcode. I just scan it and okay. I'm gone. I'll, I'll have to do that because I actually uh, uh, added to the key ring on my phone I don't know if everybody knows what I'm talking about, but you have a key ring and you put all your different cards on your key ring on your phone. And uh, the one I have there is, I put it on there some time ago and so it's not working. So I'll just have to dump it you need a, start you need over a, again. You need a new one. Uh, one of the things that they're doing mm -hmm. in the stores, and I don't think this fries is doing it, but some of them, you go through the store and you take your phone and you scan all the individual things you're gonna buy put it in your cart, you go out they, and they do it right there. You don't, you don't even go through the checkout. There's a person there that, that takes that information off your card, boom. And you don't, you don't stand in any line or anything. So that, so it fries at, the, at your local store there, that's called scan and go. And I showed that in my shopping video, let's okay. go shopping. And uh, it, uh, it works fine. It's an app and, and that store does it. It does okay. scan and go. So you just scan the items and it, it puts it on the app in your phone. But what happens is, is when you, when you, the question then is how do you pay for it? So what you do is you go to the uh, self checkout and you'll see the little scan and go barcode on the self checkout. And you, that's the last thing you scan. And when you scan that, it dumps all the stuff out of your phone into the into that um, the machine the self checkout machine and then you put your credit card in or whatever um, that that and it works just fine. Now I was told I didn't actually do this yet, but I was told um, that in the Scan and Go app there's an option, but you sort of have to go to I don't know if you have to phone Kroger or somehow, but you can't have it linked to a credit card where um, so it would automatically charge it to a credit card. So you don't even have to do that to, to do that self checkout thing. I never did that. I, I couldn't quite figure out how to do it. It's not that simple, but, uh, but apparently you can do that. I was at Fry's this morning and learned something really interesting. Um, a resident and, and friend uh, was in front of me and um, she ended up leaving and um, then I did my purchase and um, I asked her about something, uh, why the woman, why the, the cashier was trying to scan something. 
and she said, oh, uh, she was trying to make sure that um, I had my senior discount because this is first Wednesday. Well, I said, well, check your, check your receipt. She did not have it on her receipt. So, so I did, I had the, you know, how Fry's does, they, they do the less 10% and whatever. And so it's important that we all check our registers uh, and make sure that our cards, especially for fuel and for First Wednesday are correct. And otherwise you need a new card. Absolutely. Do you, have to put, do you have to put your items then on the the uh, self checkout uh, bagging area? No, they always no, say, no, no. When you one of the tricks is not tricks, but one of the things when you go into the store on the right hand side there, you'll see the scan and go bags. So they actually have clear bags and they say scan and go right on them. You'll see them right right on the right hand side where when you enter the store, what you want to do is you want to take half a dozen of those bags with you. And when you go around and you scan something into your phone, you put it in those clear bags. So it's all bagged when you get there. So you don't have to take the stuff out. We use the grocery pickup a lot at Fry's. So you can, you can look on your phone in the Fry's app and you can do your shopping on the Fry's app and go ahead and pay for it and then set up a uh, pickup time. And then you just pull into one of their designated parking places and call them up and say, I'm here or I'll check in in the app on your phone. And they just bring it right out to your car and load it right into your car. Then you can't go to the bar. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. All right, that's good. Ron, one last question. Uh, you were talking about the Amazon gift cards. What's the process for putting those into your account on Amazon? So um, you just peel off the um, peel off the back of them, and there'll be a number, right? And in the Amazon, you just go to your Amazon account, and you'll see Redeem Gift Cards. So you click on the Redeem Gift Cards, and then you just type the number in and hit Enter, and that'll immediately see it shows up as a is a um, is a fifty dollar credit on your account. So that yeah. card can be reloaded again with no, more money, no, or no, do you, you just don't. shred it? Just shred it. Well, you don't have to shred it. There's there's no personal information on there, right? So you don't have to shred it. Just throw it away. You don't you don't even have to put in the numbers. It'll scan the number for you with your phone. You scan it and it goes oh. in. You don't even have to put the number in. Manually. Yeah, I, I don't usually put it. I don't use my phone to put that. I guess you could. Yeah, I guess you would. I always put it in. I always am at my PC when I'm doing it. So I just type the number in. But I guess you're right. It's um, you could just scan it. Yeah. So it was it was really interesting. A few years ago um, on those cards was um, it was a you, you, you had to um, it wasn't a peel off sticker. You actually had to uh, use it. You had to scrape it off, you know, and if you scrape too hard, you scrape the number. Off. The number. <laughs> <laughs> and so there was a few times that uh, it, it would, you, if you called them, they actually could figure out what those numbers were. There, there was another way of going about it, but, but it, was, uh, um, it was very interesting. And I was glad when they got rid of that because I was always nervous when you were, you know, we were scared. Because sometimes if you bought, you know, a $100 gift card, you don't want to lose that. That's a, that's a that's a big amount of money. So you 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 had to be very careful when you did that. But there none of them are like that anymore. They just peels them peels them off. Or I guess if you that's a great idea because oftentimes um, they run out of the hundred dollar ones all the time, and sometimes they even run about run out of the fifty. I mean they 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 at Christmas time they're hard. They're just bringing boxes and boxes and boxes of these things out, like Dick said, and. Uh, uh, sometimes you have to get a bunch of 20s, you know, like a 21, 20 dollars. Well, I'm usually buying three or four hundred dollars when I'm buying doing this. So, um, so the scanning is a great idea. I'll have to put the app, make sure the apps on my phone and just just scan them all because then you don't have to type all those numbers in. I have a Visa card with Chase Bank. Uh, with that, I have the option of once I go through the process and enter uh their information that they need i get points from my visa card for my purchases and i can use those points to shop at amazon 
so you know all this other stuff of, as far as buying the Amazon card at Fry's and putting it on the on the Amazon account, I just use my my uh, credit card points, and Amazon accepts that once you do the the dance and fill out all the forms, and I just do it that way. But you're still going to get if you bought the Amazon cards with your Visa card, then you're going to get the points from your Visa because you bought you 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 purchased some stuff on Visa, right? So you're going to get those points anyway. So then uh, you're going to get all the other added benefits once you take the Amazon cards and use them. Oh, okay. You know, like yeah. for the book. Yeah, you know, because you got to buy it anyway, unless you pay cash for them. But if you're putting them on your Visa card, you're going to get all the points anyway, so it doesn't matter, right? True. True. Okay. I'll have to try that. Double yes. dipping. It's almost like double. You usually can't get reward points though when you when you purchase um, a financial like like another card or something like that that's a cash entity. Yeah, but you can with the uh, with, with the gift cards with with if you, if it's a straight cash card or loading cash on like like those prepaid Visa cards, you know, it wouldn't happen with that. But but they don't know when you're buying those Amazon cards. Yeah, you, you'd still get points. Gift, gift cards are a huge profit producer for retailers. Uh, people spend millions of dollars to buy them and never use them. That's right. Now that's why that's why what I do is when I get home, I I always put them into my Amazon account. I never have a bunch of gift cards laying around that are you know. I always take them when as soon as I get home and I put them all in, into my Amazon account. So it's like I have cash in my Amazon account. <laughs> 